really excited to be sharing this kids moment with you. And I don't know about you, but I am a huge fan of this movie that maybe you've heard of called Star Wars. It's actually nine different movies that we get to enjoy and it's a series that I have enjoyed when I since I've been very very young and maybe you have been too. So I want to hear right now I want to hear your best Wookiee or maybe your best Darth Vader or maybe your best lightsaber sound or maybe your best phaser sound. Oh, that's Star Trek. Anyway, let me hear it, right? One, two, three, go. Awesome. Man, those are good. I know that I spent a lot of time trying to perfect those noises. I'm a little rusty now, so I, I won't put you through that. But what I love about movies like Star Wars is that they transport you to this time that um, seems so magical. This time that um, you know, is kind of a disconnect from the reality that we are a part of every day of our lives. And there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of action and intrigue and adventure. And so I love that. I find myself even now, I watch those movies as a way to kind of recapture a lot of my, my youth. And yet, I know that when I was younger, I would be disappointed because like with Star Wars, I wanted to be Luke Skywalker and I wanted to be able to lift rocks and to lift starships just with the wave of my hand and realize that I didn't have the power of the force in me. But what I want to share with you this morning is that there's actually, I think, a connection between Star Wars and the Bible. And again, what I love about movies like Star Wars is that they actually help me better understand things in the Bible that seem so foreign or so ancient or so difficult to understand. And so what I mean by that in particular is, if you remember in episode four, New Hope, there is a scene between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader when they are dueling it out. They have their lightsabers out and they're fighting and you can just tell it's Obi-Wan Kenobi is overmatched. And he is he is no match for Darth Vader. He is much older now. His powers in the Force maybe have faded a little bit. You can just tell that he knows that his time is drawing to a close. And he says something in the midst of that that I find to be so intriguing. He says strike me down and I will become more powerful than you could ever imagine. It's a, it's a quick line, it's a quick scene, part of the scene. You can easily overlook it. And yet there's something really powerful about what he says. And I think that line connects interestingly with what we know in the Bible. In particular, it's what Christ says about the Holy Spirit. Now, maybe you've heard of God the Father, and you've heard of God the Son, but we don't talk a lot about God the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've heard of it as the Holy Ghost. Maybe you've heard of it as the Advocate, or the Counselor, or the Helper. Maybe you haven't heard much of it at all. It's this kind of mysterious thing that maybe has been referenced along the way, but you don't really know what it is. Well, I want to share with you that I think much like Obi-Wan Kenobi talking about his being struck down that he would become more powerful, Christ does the same thing with the Holy Spirit because he knows, he knows that he will be going to the cross, that he will be dying for our sins, but he also knows that he will be resurrecting and that his death is not the end of the story. In fact, it is the continuation or even the beginning of something new. And so what Christ understands and what God knew at the very beginning is that he would have a specific time on earth that he would walk with us, that he would be with us, that he would heal us, that he would teach us, 
that he would really work to transform our hearts. And then ultimately he would go to the cross for us and he would defeat sin and death for us. But that is not the end of the story, nor is it the end of the gift that he has given us. Because what he has done is he has left us his Holy Spirit. He recognized that he was confined by a human body, but that as the Spirit, he can be anywhere, every, everywhere at any time. He is no longer confined. And so when you and I say yes to Christ, when we follow Christ, when we become followers of Jesus, we in turn receive the Holy Spirit. We're told that in the Bible as well. We receive the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit enters into us. And so you could say that the power of resurrection itself enters into us. And so it may not feel the same or be the same as lifting rocks or lifting starships or any of that kind of stuff, but it is a power that is eternal. And it is a power that allows us to have an intimate connection with God in unique and special ways. So when we are troubled, we have a comforter. When we are struggling with a decision, we have a counselor. When we are unsure of what direction to go, we have an advocate. When we don't even know what to say to God, when we struggle to put words to the feelings that we have, we have someone who is able to interpret those groanings and be able to tell those things to God himself. And so really, you and I have great power because of the Holy Spirit. And we can take a lot of hope in that, a new hope. And so we have something to look forward to that is not make-believe, but is very real in and through the life, death, and resurrection of Christ.